Hello YouTube. Can we say with certainty that the body is the repository for all of our concepts? What are you? What is it that is thinking about this right now and where is it exactly? A friend yelled quite loudly today, awareness is information concerning a sketch of the brain's attention processes. Though he said this with conviction, I cannot buy this wholesale nor do I need something mysterious to be satiated. I do not claim to have the answer. I do not have the answer. I cannot tell you where consciousness dwells or if it is more than awareness. Plato believed the brain generates consciousness. And from what I read, scientists agree. I think the brain is more a processing center for consciousness. In addition, it serves as a passage for thoughts, sensation, and awareness. However, I am not convinced that consciousness is generated from a three-pound lump of tissue. Frequently, I consider the easily observed differences. As it relates to the division of the human species, race or ethnicity, social economic class, believer and non-believer, etc., and after such a task and consideration of past lessons, I am still befuddled how many can put so much emphasis on these matters. Differences intrigue, yet to a sickening extent, many seem not able to travel past it. Whatever happened to the importance of awareness? What we do with it? How we use our animating force? What drives a person to select violent extortion over one's fellow man versus healthy cooperation? Why the preoccupation with arena sports versus the elaborately complex detail inner workings of a creative genius? Mankind's potential is well known in certain areas, like the advocating of authoritarian socialism and wealth redistribution. In these days, we can see such anti-human, anti-justice, and anti-freedom positions being proudly promoted. Yet, it appears unfashionable to appeal to that which is characterized by grandeur. Why? Why? Is it as simple as deeming the majority of humans today as too stupid and ignorant to see the world from a larger perspective? Is it merely a matter of the stupid breeding more quickly? I am not sure. I do not pretend to know. What I do know is that it is a failure to face life squarely when resorting to the engineering of a new humanity. Maybe I am comforted in my subjectiveness, but I cling to that for now. Eugenics brings us no closer to intimately evidencing the possession of inside information. Again, a question. Why the pursuit of pleasure over the battling of a solvable problem, one that in the end adds to one's pleasure? Could the answer live in the germ of revolution? I doubt it. For it appears rare that one dare claim that individuals own their own bodies and the fruits of their labors. Hence, how could a revolution bring anything without a deep understanding of consciousness and desire for body autonomy? I do not get how one can be so riveted on trivial matters and the fighting of each other. Surely what matters is the consciousness of a person, not what their body yields the clothes they wear, or the money they have accumulated. As we spin on these things, we fail to see the war on our consciousness. Many see abusing power over others as to limit their freedom, though an archetypal process, as just another day in history. What I see is the exaggeration and energetic expansion of a pathological aspect. I do not see how one who is mildly present not notice its staggering malignancy. Every day, 
America demonstrates it has become a front for the underlying industrial, military, financial crime syndicate that animates it. What's the worth of good intentions if mankind is prohibited by the very nature of the corrupt system they are in from reforming it? I have to ask, what is our part in this? We seem more than willing to create an obsessive fixation on certain superficial events that seize the collective psyche. Hypnotized and brainwashed by the incessant managing and massaging of reality. What is it if not a Jedi mind trick when the produced gullible and highly suggestible public is incited into conflict? are unaware of the criminals covertly supporting both sides, as the criminals reap the benefits of the conflict. It's completely sick and totally insane, terms that carries false and self-negating premises. Think war on terror. You say there is no war? as the Office of Perception Management convinces a critical mass of people to believe and to swallow wholeheartedly the fashioned objectively true. Oh, I can't wait for the reinforcement of each other's delusions by means of a self-perpetuating feedback loop. What can we do today to eradicate this bondage? Well, I think that that is a personal question. What I am willing to do is to commit myself to being true to myself and to others. The mind control facilitators will not get my support as they invoke the mindless to speak for me. I will not degrade my comprehension of consciousness as to behave like imbecilic nursery school children. I will not join deceptive forces that preach revolution, but have joined together to create a vast canvas on which to play out a real resistance to everything that has gone on before, supposedly. No, I will think, feel, and allow my untethered consciousness, the opportunity to change the dynamic, the dynamic that has kept so many from seeing the truth for so very long. I will not push myself on others or pretend that I know. However, when I do know, I will speak with authority. I will not be like the celebrities who gleefully raise their voices, but never their hands never to endanger their career so something about the injustices that abound herein is not honestly confronted. Forget pretty speeches. To put an end to the war on consciousness, I reason it will require personally all of us who takes this seriously. It will require us to get down in the trenches and to actually spend your life energy consistently challenging the artificial power of those that will try to use every moment to hijack the power away from the people. What about you?